ओके वेलकम बैक टू क्लैरी कंसेप्ट अनलिशिंग कंसेप्चुअल लर्निंग फॉर मोर सर्च कंसेप्चुअल वीडियोज यू कैन लॉग इन टू अवर वेबसाइट डब्ल्यू 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 डॉट क्लैरी कंसेप्ट डॉट कॉम सो टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट वन ऑफ द वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग टॉय दैट यू माइट हैव सीन इन योर हाउसेज किड्स प्लेइंग विद इट राइट सो बिफोर आई मूव ऑन टू द टॉपिक ऑन विच वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस फर्स्ट लेटर सी द टॉय दैट किड्स इज प्लेइंग सो आई हैव गॉट अ वीडियो फ्रॉम याना क्लैंस किड शो अ पेरेंट इज प्लेइंग विथ इज किड with a toy called punching toy and i hope all of you are aware about this i mean you might have seen this right this this is a toy wherein if a kid punches the toy the toy fall down and again come back in upright position and there is no no attachment of this toy with the ground the total the toy is totally free you will see that a parent is actually lifting the toy you can see it's totally you know separated from the ground so then why does this happens you might have also amazed right whenever you have seen this kind of toys you might have thought of that how does this toy fall back and again come back to its original position there is no electronics involved there is nothing involved in this right then how does this happen what is the physics behind this so today we will discuss that why exactly what happens to this toy when somebody punches the toy it falls down and what is the reason behind its bounce back right so that answer will be provided by the topic called stability of submerged body which we are going to learn today okay so before i move on i would like to uh, explain you several terminologies associated with this particular topic so let me brief you about uh, stability positions so let us say that i have this curved surface and on this surface i have a spherical ball now from this position if i try to disturb the ball and let us say i bring i take the ball it over here just a moment let me take the pen tool i bring the ball at this particular position and then i leave so let's say i disturb the ball and then i leave the ball what will happen is the ball again will uh, you know uh, reach to the original position that is this one right so even after disturbance ball is coming back to its original position so such kind of equilibrium this position of the ball is said to be stable equilibrium all the ball is in equilibrium at this position but stable equilibrium is a position wherein even after disturbing the position of the ball if the ball returns to its original position then this kind of equilibrium is called stable equilibrium on the other hand let's say i have the flat surface now at this particular instant of time the ball is in equilibrium position ball is at rest for example right now what happens if i disturb the ball and i if, if i change the position to this after disturbances do you think ball is going to come back to its original position on its own no do you think it is going to deviate further no that means this position or this equilibrium position is known as neutrally stable equilibrium which means that this is a equilibrium position from where even if you provide some disturbance to the body the body neither returns back to its original position nor it deviates further that means this kind of equilibrium is known as neutrally stable equilibrium and third equilibrium so let us say you have perfectly capped a ball on this uh, you know couch surface such that the weight is balanced by that uh, reaction force so that ball is perfectly aligned there and it is standing there so still the ball is in equilibrium over here but what if you provide a slight disturbance and you you provide a slight disturbance to the ball and then lift the ball from here do you think ball is going to come back on the top no do you think ball is going to stay there no now what will happen ball will try to deviate further so it will move down so it will it will further deviate its own position so this kind of equilibrium position that ball is there currently is known as unstable equilibrium it means at this point of time ball is in equilibrium but if a small disturbance is applied to the ball the ball becomes unstable right so this is called unstable equilibrium so now these are terminologies that we have to understand because when we will study this topic you will understand that stability of the submerged body is also in relation with the stable equilibrium neutral stable equilibrium and unstable equilibrium so my so i this example was just given to make you understand about the terminologies these three terminologies right so i hope you understood the terminologies now we will move back towards our original topic so let us say i have the fluid okay a, a fluid field and i have some sort of let's say object a, a spherical object the object is bottom heavy you you might see that uh, the dash line it, which means bottom heavy means the weight is more more weight is being concentrated in the bottom portion of the ball now let me ask you one question how many of you know the difference between centroid and cg pause the video think about it 
I am 100% sure many of you will uh, say that sir, both of them are same. Let me clarify that uh, the, the doubt over here. Centroid is a geometric center. So that means it is a center of a shape. Whereas CG is the center of the mass. Say for example, I have the I have the spherical ball. In this case, if you see the mass is concentrated at the bottom portion. So ideally the CG should be in the center. But here CG will be shifted towards the bottom portion, right? So let's say CG is somewhere over here, somewhere over here. So now I hope you understood. G is the centroid, I mean center of gravity, CG. So you can see it is no more in the center. But if I ask you what is the centroid of the spherical ball, centroid will still remain at the center because it is the center point of the spherical shape irrespective of the uh, mass distribution. But CG is reflect, I mean CG reflects the center of the mass distribution. So, if the ball was uniformly distributed, I mean, if the mass was uniformly distributed in the ball, in that case, CG and centroid will both coincide. I hope you are getting this point. Centroid is geometric property, CG is the property in, of mass distribution. Remember this thing. So, now, why I am saying this thing to you that if a body is submerged in a fluid medium, so this body will have a self weight and the self weight will be acting at a CG in downward direction. Now, if body is submerged in any medium completely, that means the body will also be having the buoyancy force in upward direction, right? At this point of time, if you are not aware about the buoyancy force and its application, I request you to go back to my lecture where I have explained you the buoyancy force and what is the quantity of buoyancy force acting and what is the direction and at which point it acts. I have clearly explained that in one of the video. So, please look at it and then come back to this video. So, buoyancy always acts in upper direction and at a point which is centroid of the body submerged in the fluid. So, centroid of the body. So, if you see the, the volume displaced by the body is again spherical because the complete body is in the fluid. Now, in this case, the center of this spherical shape is over here. That means the buoyancy force act at point B which is in the center. So, now if, I, if I tilt the body a bit, if I tilt the body a bit, and now if you see, so if I just draw the weight force first, so the weight force acts downward, the buoyancy force acts upward, right. Now if I tilt the body and then if I leave the body from this particular angle, so if I tilt it and then I remove my hands, what will happen? You see what will happen is weight is downward again, buoyancy force is upward. So if you look at this line, both of this force will create a restoring couple. If you see, if you tilt the body, you leave the body from here, this will have a restoring couple, isn't it? Restoring couple. Couple. And this restoring couple basically is responsible for bringing the body back to its original position. So, this kind of body in a fluid in this particular orientation is said to be stable equilibrium. Why? Because right now it is an equilibrium. But even after you tilt the body, even after you disturb the body, even after you give the angular disturbances and leave the body from their position, the body is again going to restore its original position and therefore this equilibrium is known as stable equilibrium. Now if you notice over here, in this case the position of center of gravity is below the center of buoyancy. Again I am repeating, in this case the position of center of gravity is below center of buoyancy. Let us take another example. Let us suppose I have the object which is uniformly danced. When I say uniformly dense, it means the CG will be at the center and also the buoyancy force will be at the center. So, you can say that uh, weight acts downward W and also buoyancy force acts upward but at the same point. Now, if you tilt the body a bit, if you rotate the body a bit and then leave from there, again if you see from this position, again weight acts downward and the buoyancy force acts upward. So, do you think the body is going to regain its original position? No. Why? Because still the forces are balancing each other. The body will stay there as it is. It will neither come in original position, neither it will deviate further. So, this kind of equilibrium is said to be neutrally stable equilibrium. I hope you are now connecting this with the earlier definition which I have taught you about these words, right? So, in this case, if you notice, both buoyancy force or center of buoyancy and center of gravity are on the same point. They coincide with each other. Let us take third condition. The third condition is reverse. I have an object which is top heavy. When I say it is top heavy, it means the CG is somewhere nearer to this heavier portion, somewhere over here. And the buoyancy force is obviously at the center of this shape, center of 
uh, you know center of this shape that means uh, uh, center of the object so buoyancy force acts in upward direction at point b the weight acts downward in on the point called g at this particular instant it is in equilibrium perfect equilibrium you see it, weight acts buoyancy force acts the body is in equilibrium but what happens if you deviate the body by let's say even 1 degree or 1.5 degree for example the buoyancy the, the buoyancy point and cg point is little deviated now if you see the buoyancy force acts at this particular point b and the weight acts at this particular point g this is upward force this is downward force now if you leave this object from this particular point what will happen is this couple that will actually if you see this force this couple will overturn the body therefore this is called overturning couple overturning means the body will neither stay here in this particular orientation it will neither regain its original orientation but rather it will overturn it will deteriorate its position even further that means this kind of stability is called uh, this kind of equilibrium is called unstable equilibrium now here if you notice the position of g and b here the center of gravity is above center of buoyancy center of gravity is above center of buoyancy so if i just summarize all these three cases what you have observed is so i can say the stability criteria of a submerged body when i say submerged it means the body is completely in a submerged in a fluid medium so when this happens so if a body is submerged say for example uh, you take the example of submarine submarine is completely submerged in the water surface if you want to understand stability of that in that case this criteria has come into picture right so uh, for a stable equilibrium the if you have seen the first case the cg was below center of buoyancy so i can say g is vertically below the point b which is center of buoyancy in second case when body was neutrally equilibrium g and b were coinciding that means they were on the same point right and for the uh, unstable equilibrium g was vertically above the center of buoyancy now these are the three criteria of stability for a submerged body so in any case if you are designing a submerged body you need to make sure that in that case the body has to be in stable equilibrium even if it deteriorates its original position it should come back to its initial orientation and that will only happen when your g is vertically below the center of buoyancy now you can see the toy that i have shown you in the very beginning of this lecture now you compare in which of the three category the toy falls see you punch the toy you punch the toy let me show you the figure you punch the toy the toy moves down it come back up now think about it it is returning to its original position its original orientation and if you notice very closely the bottom portion of this toy is very very heavy is more denser if you just lift the toy and if you see you will find the bottom portion is very heavy it means the cg is more shifted towards the downward side so cg is somewhere over here so weight acts in downward direction now what is the see this this object is also submerged in a fluid medium called atmospheric air we are surrounded by the atmospheric air air it's, itself is a fluid body now that means this object is itself uh, you know uh, submerged in the fluid medium that is air now if i ask you at which particular point the buoyancy force acts your answer should be very clear see this is completely submerged in air medium the shape of this object is very known to you you must say the center of the submerged volume that is entire body is somewhere over here so this is somewhere where buoyancy force should act so buoyancy force acts in upward direction so here if you look at the location your cg is below the buoyancy force that means it is the first category of uh, case right when if even if you tilt what will happen if you tilt the buoyancy force come over here cg comes over here again this couple will restore the original orientation of this particular toy so i hope you understood the criteria for you as an engineer you have to remember this i mean you have to uh, uh, understood this particular criteria and remember this particular for, uh, orientations of relative positions of g and b for different criteria i hope you understood this particular lecture very clearly thank you so much see you in the next class for more such conceptual videos you can log into our website clariconcepts.com thank you so much